Amanda Householder, thanks so much for coming back on to talk beliefs from your home in California. Now, I interviewed you very recently about your activism via TikTok and other platforms concerning abuses within the Circle of Hope boarding school, the school run by your own mother and father. Since our interview, a lot has happened, so much so, in fact, that it prompted this follow-up episode. So um, how have you been, Amanda, since our last chat with all your activism work? I'm uh, sure you've had to take the occasional break from social media. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, we've been super busy, definitely super busy, um, having to take breaks here and there. Um, but a lot of good things have been happening, so that's good. Right. Before we go into detail about what has happened with the Circle of Hope Christian Boarding School, could you just refresh the memories of viewers on what the Circle of Hope is, your own involvement, and why you felt compelled to call them out? Circle of Hope is a boarding school that my mother and father, uh, Stephanie and Boyd Householder, opened up July 1st, 2006. Um, I was 15, and because I was a teenager, they used me as a staff member. Um, so that means that I had to dish out any types of punishments that were given. It was supposed to be a boarding school that any parent could send their teenager or child that they thought was struggling with drugs, alcohol, anger issues. Any problem that a parent is afraid of that they feel they need to help their child with it, they were supposed to be able to send to Circle of Hope so those kids could get help. Um, but that's not what happened. Punishments were severe. Uh, restrainings, which is where my father would slam a girl to the ground and call myself a teenager and other teenagers over to put all of our weight on the back of their pressure points, on the back of their arms or their legs, as my dad would kneel on the back of their neck or my mom. They would trade places sometimes. Um, that was the most severe punishment that I ever personally witnessed there, but they would do other things like extreme workouts, making you walk around like a duck, just anything they could do to humiliate you. They would, they were extremely emotionally abusive as well. Um, they would con constantly say, oh, you're going to be nothing but a whore. You're going to be nothing but a prostitute, good for nothing, a uh, drug addict. Your parents don't love you just it was not the place that they said it was in fact it was the complete opposite so and so just to be clear nothing in the brochure uh <laughs> said anything about what would happen once they get there in terms of uh of uh, punishments no they they did tell parents that they sometimes had to restrain girls but the way they put it was that if they um, spit at you or vi were violent towards you, they would have to hold you down until you calm down. That is not at all how that went down. You could be restrained for not smiling. I remember two hmm. sisters getting restrained side by side because they looked at each other. You literally got restrained for anything. And the restraints were extremely violent and lasted, the longest I remember was about an hour and 45 minutes. Okay, so in August 2020, not that long ago, all your shouting from the rooftops finally paid off. Now, something pretty big happened at Circle of Hope. Now, can you give us a rundown on uh, exactly what happened? Yes, August 14th and the 15th, they removed 25 girls from what I was told. Um, I got a call August 13th, and it was from the deputy that's been working with us, and he mentioned that they had already removed some girls and they were going back the next day to remove the rest of the girls. Um, they took the girls from Circle of Hope and put, placed some of them within foster care and some of them within another boarding school facility like setting. I cannot say what that boarding school is really like because I've never personally been mm -hmm. there. I can just say from the website, it looked really nice, but that doesn't mean anything. Um, I have been getting messages from people on my TikTok that have said, I um, am families with people that are fostering these kids. And mm. most of them have told us that we are extremely grateful that you guys spoke out because they don't want to be there anymore because of the stuff that was going on. Um, from my understanding, those girls are now back out 
back at home with their parents, but I can't be 100% sure that those parents didn't send them back to a different facility. And you were saying uh, when you were talking earlier about uh, sniffer dogs and hidden cameras and that sort of thing? Yes, actually, um, it would have been August 26th, I, th I think it was. They actually served a search warrant at Circle of Hope. I'm not, I don't know what exactly got the search warrant, but they went in with the search warrants and um, searched the whole property. They went in with um, sniffer dogs that actually sniff out electronics. And the only thing, when I, when I heard that, my mind went to, um, there was a girl who had mentioned that my father had forced her to watch um, something inappropriate on the computer with him while he molested her. And so um, that's where my brain went. And then other girls were talking about how um, he actually had hidden cameras places. So personally, I feel like they were looking for hidden camera or porn, basically. So. All right. And um, the, the, so this was all a state investigation, basically, is what you're telling me, isn't it? Yes. A highway stat patrol team is what came in and um, facilitated the search warrant. Um, there is still an ongoing investigation criminally. I don't know. We're still in the waiting game with that. I don't know where we're at. Just waiting other than that. And this has been pretty much all over the news. I've seen it popping up on so many different websites. And uh, I mean, uh, can you keep track of them at this point? No. People have been sending me article after article. Once NBC did their article, it, it blew up. Like, I could not find... Well, not, I could find it, but I there was just so many articles that I could not go through them. So people were sending sending me the articles on top of that. So it was just like, wow. Um, and then also we did get a um, lawsuit uh, a lawsuit filed against them. So there are two um, mm -hmm. lawsuits out against my father and unfortunately my younger brother who um, for sexually abusing them the girls. So. Amanda, you did a lot of work on social media to draw attention to the abuses at not only this particular religious boarding school, but similar ones like the Agape Boarding School for Boys. Uh, but you weren't alone. YouTubers, podcast hosts, and others all pitched in to raise awareness. Isn't that right? Correct. Actually, um, the first podcast I ever went on was from a fellow survivor. Her name is Miranda, and um, her podcast is called The Troubled Podcast. When we got that video of my dad um, basically telling the girls to knock another girl out, um, I posted it, and she saw the video. She tagged me, and she was basically like, I'm a podcast. And so from there, um, she's been basically my right hand man. Um, she got me on other YouTubers, um, our great friend Janine Miller, um, from Pieces of Victory. She too is a fellow survivor of a independent fundamental Baptist boarding school in the state of California, Ramona, California, to be exact, um, called Victory, California. Mm -hmm. Um, she actually wrote a book about her time there and it's called Pieces of Victory, but it too is extremely similar to Circle of Hope, um, which is just, it just goes to show that there are multiple schools out like this because this school was from the 80s. So it's been around for a really long time. And they picked up and moved to Florida. So basically from there, we started getting our story out and um, we went to TikTok. We had other survivors um, go to TikTok and start sharing their stories. And I honestly think that's, if I remember correctly, you found my TikTok. And that's, right. that's how um, I got onto your YouTube as well. And so I honestly want to say thank you to every single one of you guys that heard our story and um, helped us share it before it even got to where it's at now. Because if it weren't for you guys, we would not, I don't think we would have had the NBC article. Well, all this became such a talked about story that it even became one of the highest trending stories on NBC. And then you discovered that a particular celebrity was following you on TikTok and had a similar story to yours in her own background. Correct. Um, Paris Hilton, she actually came out with her own documentary called This Is Paris. And 
the beginning of the documentary goes, which honestly, I think personally, I think is brilliant because it goes into what the effects of these boarding schools have has on a person. Um, she created this whole persona because she didn't want to, she never wanted to be the person that got her mm. put into a boarding school. So she created this whole persona while she was at a boarding school. I personally think that showing the whole aspect of it was completely brilliant because a lot of us deal with that. A lot of us deal with finding who we truly are after school because for so long you're not even allowed to be who you are you're constantly being told oh you're going to be a hooker you're going to be a prostitute you're going to be a druggie so eventually you're just you give up and you're like why not and so i mean some not everyone but some people like myself i turned i turned to drugs i turned to partying all the time because it was the only way to cope um towards the end of her documentary she goes into more of her stay at the boarding school. And maybe it's because I grew up in that scene, but that part was, to be honest, the hardest part to watch. Um, seeing her, I know it was a cartoon, but seeing her be locked in solitary confinement was just, I know it was something I grew up around, but it was just so heartbreaking knowing that it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter who you are or where you come from your parents still could be manipulated into thinking that they're giving you help while you're being abused. And you can't tell them, you can't reach out to them. Even if your parents are like the richest people in the world, it shows hmm. she couldn't even talk to her parents. She couldn't, she couldn't freely say anything, even though her mom and dad would have been there in a heartbeat, probably with lawyers, probably with whatever they, like army they could find to get her out she still was so afraid to even say anything because of the way these places act um i honestly am so grateful that her producer brought this out towards the end of the documentary because for so many years while i was at circle of hope janine miller the lady i brought up before Mm -hmm. was was in Washington and other places marching against these troubled teen industries. While a lot of us were still locked up, all of these people were still fighting for us. And now it makes me proud knowing that we have such a bigger voice to show, hey, Paris is bringing light to this, but you need to look at all of these other people that have been fighting for this for so many years. Like since 2007, Janine was, like I said, was fighting for me while I was mm -hmm. in Circle of Hope. I didn't know that. I didn't know that until we started talking this year. And she's talking about how she knew about Circle of Hope. And I'm like, what? And she's like, yeah, no, I have pictures of us marching at this place, again, fighting against the troubled teen industry because this person reached out to us about Circle of Hope and blah, blah, blah. And I'm all like, you knew of me in a weird way while I was still brainwashed thinking that what was going on was just normal and you're still out here today fighting. And so now we have Paris, which Paris brought so many more people. I don't know if that makes sense. Like Paris coming out and saying, Hey guys, we're breaking code silence brought this huge army. And now like all of us together from all of the people that have been fighting for years and all of these new people were all together stronger and i can see something actually being done now that we're all like hey this is wrong we did something or you guys did something to us mm. that is just completely not okay and i do see that in the future that this is going to be changed i do see some reform happening within the trouble teen industry because of how big it now has become with us fighting back so yeah i suppose uh when you do have a uh a big name attached to something it shouldn't have to be that way but when, when you do have that it, it sometimes it really does help bring a lot of awareness doesn't it it does i think honestly um 
what happened was when she came forward and said, hey, this is what I went through. All of the survivors that went through that felt less alone. All of them felt, oh, Paris went through this. I can start speaking out too. And so if it can happen to her. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, honestly, I think, I don't know how to explain it other than like, if she did not do that, I don't think the survivor community would have felt as not that what happened to us was okay, but as normal, if that makes sense, because, okay, I'm not alone. Other people went through it. Like within, <laughs> within the, this is Paris, um, documentary i got thousands upon thousands of friend requests with people it's so sad to be honest it's so sad that there are so many people out there that went through this but of people that went through the boarding schools and they all had the hashtag breaking code silence um mm. border on it and multiple people on my friends list started saying hey i've reached my 5,000 um friend list because i guess on facebook you can only have 5,000 people yeah. and multiple of them were like i have i can't accept any more friends this is insane oh. like how many people have really gone through this and because paris came out all of those thousands upon thousands of survivors now feel like they have a voice and just to be clear it's certainly we're not saying that every boarding school inevitably goes down this route but there certainly seems to be a lot there are a lot i cannot say that there. are I can't say all boarding schools are bad. I can just speak from my experience and from what I know from my friends who went through the boarding schools they went through. Um, I know there is a small list out there of boarding schools that are um, okay or safe. I personally, I know there are kids out there that need help. I mm. personally, when it comes to that, just because of how I was raised in that, I, I, I'm not going to... I'm not going to, I personally will not suggest someone to send their child away, child away because I mean, that was uh, 16 years of my life was being practically locked up in one of these boarding schools. And mm. I know there were, they were only three, but all three of those boarding schools were extremely similar. I'm just traumatized. There's no way I personally feel that I can suggest any boarding school to anyone. Mm. Um, but there are people out there who have done the research and if you need to find that research, I would gladly get you into contact with those people. I just personally, I don't feel comfortable enough saying that, yeah, I think boarding school setting is what you need for your kid. I, I still back away from that. I get, I don't know. I just want to be around my kids all the time, especially cause I just don't trust people. Okay, so that can't be the end of your activism, I'm sure. Is there anything coming up uh, that we should know about? So the ending of September, um, I was contacted by Paris Hilton, and um, she personally asked me if I would join her. Um, I'm trying to remember the term she used. Basically, a group of people she's putting together to bring awareness on the troubled teen industry. Um, I gladly accepted because before Paris even um, came out with her documentary, before I even knew Paris went through a boarding school, that was my plan. My plan was to die <laughs> trying to expose the troubled teen industry. Um, so when she reached out to me, I honestly felt so honored because I don't know. I just, I grew up in that and I just feel like it's my, it's, it's what I would, I don't believe in like destinies or anything, but I, I do believe that that's why I went through what I went through is to be able to explain these boarding schools. Like, I don't know why other, like, maybe that's just me thinking, oh, <laughs> to make it easier. But I do feel like I am just trying to make what went through, what I went through something good. And so when she reached out to me, I was so honored and I accepted. So, um, we will be working together, um, myself and a whole bunch of other people that she has chosen um, to be exposing the troubled teen industry. And I cannot be any more proud to be where we're at now. So I'm extremely, extremely excited. This year, November 14th and the 15th, we actually do have a protest 
um, in Missouri, in Cedar County, Missouri, that we are putting together um, to protest Agape boarding school and mm -hmm. their sister school called Refuge of Grace. Well, sorry, it's called Wings of Faith now. While I was there, it was Refuge of Grace. These two schools are two schools within the same county as my parents that operate the same exact way. My parents actually took what they learned from Agape and opened up Circle of Hope. My mom worked over at Refuge of Grace for a while, and I know what happened there was was bad. It it was it got to the point I wasn't even allowed to go over there anymore because I was banned. Um, but it was bad. They they didn't really like any other staff child over there. So like there were other staff child like children that would go over there, and eventually they were banned. So because of what was going on there was so harsh um and it's sad because i know the guys at agape had it bad but from what i'm understanding these girls have it horrible like agape agape and circle of hope were bad but it's 2020 these girls shouldn't be going through that and these boys at agape shouldn't be going through what they're going through now and they're still open so august or not august november 14th and the 15th we will be out there protesting these two schools um we did get state legislators looking at changing the laws in missouri so um i'm not sure if she will be at our protest but i did mm -hmm. bring it up to her and she said that she might so um I just, all I see is good stuff coming from what's happening now. And I can't be more proud than what I am. So. Absolutely. Right. That was a really informative update. And congrats to you, Amanda, for all your hard work in calling out these abuses and rallying the troops. It certainly seems to be getting results. And as before, I will leave links to your social media in the description below. And all that's left to say is thank you once again, Amanda for coming back on to Talk Police. Thank you for having me. It was really nice again. <laughs>